Hey there, welcome back. In case we haven't met yet, my name is B, and I love to code the heck out of Squarespace and teach other designers how to do it too. Today is day number seven of the 12 days of Christmas, a video series where I'll be sharing with you one new Squarespace customization every single day until December 12th. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited for today's tutorial because we'll be creating a looping or rotating words effect in headings in Squarespace. Now, keep in mind that this customization is something that you're gonna be able to apply in 7.0, 7.1, Classic Editor and 7.1 Fluid Engine. So it's going to be something that you're going to be able to use in many projects to come. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Alrighty, so here I am in a 7.1 site and I'll be working with this hero section. I'll be replacing this heading that I have here right now for the looping words one. Now, in order to create the looping words effect, what we need is a done for us plugin that is called Squarespace Rotating Words. And it's this little code pen that we have in here. Now, this plugin is built out of three parts. So we have the HTML part, which is going to be the structure of the H1 that we're going to be creating or any other type of heading that we want to create. Then we have the CSS part, which is going to help us style a bunch of things. This is just going to basically place the rotating words where they need to be in order for the effect to actually happen the way that it should happen. And then the most important part is the jQuery part. So that is what's actually going to create that looping animation that we see happening in this little demo that we have down here. So the very first thing that we're going to do here is basically implement all of this plugin inside our Squarespace site. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at how we can modify things to be able to adapt them to our own design. Let's go ahead and grab the HTML site first. I'm going to go ahead and grab all of this structure. And then in here in this hero section, I'm going to be removing this little block that I have here for the H1. And I'm going to be using a code block instead. So I'm going to add my little code block. You can see that I'm working with Fluid Engine, but like I said, this one also works with the classic editor. So here I have the whole section. And like I said, I'm going to leave everything as it is right now. We're going to tweak things in just a minute. So I'm going to leave that code there the way it is. I'm not really touching the words or anything at this time. And then I'm going to move on to the CSS. I'm going to grab all of the CSS that we have in here with a bunch of keyframes at the end to create that little smooth animation that we see. So let's go ahead and go into design, custom CSS. I'm gonna paste all of that in here. You can see how everything sort of got styled in here. We have everything aligned to the center. We have a different font. And then we only see one of the phrases in here instead of all of them. And now let's go ahead and bring in our jQuery. Now, because we're going to be working with jQuery, we need to make sure that we have the jQuery library inside our website. So that basically means that inside your advanced and code injection section, you need to have a little script that looks kind of like this. Sometimes what it says instead of code.jQuery, it says ajax.googleappy. So if you're already working with a third party plugin, or if you already have a bunch of different customizations on your site that already uses jQuery, it's very likely that you have this little script in there. If you don't, you can go ahead and grab this same snippet from the code that comes with this tutorial. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and go into the footer section and I'm going to add in here a couple of script tags. And then in here, I'm going to paste in all of the jQuery from the code pen. With all of this in place, we can go ahead and save the changes and you're gonna see how automatically now we have a couple of looping words in here or looping phrases. All right, so the first thing that I want to do here is actually change these phrases because this is not the title that I wanna have in here. So I'm going to go ahead and go in here. And then basically here, what we can change is all of these words. I mean, we can change everything here, but that would break the code. So we're just going to go ahead and change a couple of things. We're going to change the phrases that we have in between like all of these tags that we have here. So we have one inside span tags, and then we have the rest of the looping words within B tags. So I'm going to start with this one. I'm just going to add in here. And then I'm going to add a couple of different words here. So just do lorem, ipsum, and then something else here. All right, that's cool. And then the other thing that I want to change in here is actually the type of heading that we're using. So this plugin is using H4 but I actually want to use an H1. So I'm going to go ahead and change these tags here. 
and we're going to be working with an H1 instead of an H4. So I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to move on to the custom CSS window to be able to continue styling. So let's go ahead and see what this plugin is already doing for us. All right, so in here you can see that we have a little snippet that is setting color, font style, font weight, font size, line height, all of that stuff for the different parts of the text that we have within this header. Now, I don't want any of these styles because I want to stick with the H1 styles that I already have in Squarespace. So I'm actually going to get rid of all of this snippet that we have here. And then once I do that, you can see how everything goes back to the styles that my H1 previously had. Now, there's a slight difference in the weight that we have for the words versus this phrase that we have up here. So in order to change this, basically what we need to do is change the weight of the B elements, which are the phrases that we have down here. So I'm going to do that in a separate snippet because I don't want to alter the code that we already have in here. I just want to remove a couple of things, but I don't want to add any more. So I'm going to go ahead and create my own little snippet all the way down here. Now, in order to target those B elements that we have in here, let's go ahead and take a look at the structure. We already saw it inside the code block, but it's going to be easier if we see things again here inside the inspect element tool. So we're gonna be targeting those B elements, like I said, within this container, like within this sort of custom heading that we're creating. So in order to make that happen, what I want to do is use that B element because this is going to be my target container along with one of the classes, one of the very specific classes that we have for all of this header. So here I could use either SP words wrapper, SP headline or SP intro because there's nothing else in Squarespace that carries those classes. So these are specific for this particular plugin. So let's go ahead and do, let's just do SP intro. So I'm going to be using SP intro, I'm going to target the B tags inside that. And then I'm going to set the font weight of that to whichever font weight I'm using for my H1. In my case, that is 900. In your case, it really depends on the weight that you already have for your H1. You may not even need to change anything if you already have bolded text for this part of the heading too. But in my case, I'm going to set this to 900. And you can see how now the weight of this matches this. So everything looks really good. If you wanted to add more styles to these rotating words, so for example, if you wanted to change the color, this is the snippet where you can do that. So here, if we wanted to set this to a different color, so for example, red, here you can do it. And then only the looping words are going to have that different font color. Now, in my case, I want to keep this black. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that and just leave the font weight in there. Now, let's go ahead and move back up and see what else we can change up here. So the other thing that I want to change because I don't want my title to be centered, I'm actually going to remove that from here. You can see how we have SP intro and then here it says text align center. I'm actually going to remove that because I don't want my text to be centered. I want it to be on the side. Now, I don't know if you've noticed this so far, but you can see here how some of the words are getting cut off and all of the phrases are not really appearing in their entirety. So I'm going to go ahead and before making any changes to the code, I'm going to refresh the page really quickly to see if that helps. All right, so we have those words there and then yes, perfect. Okay, so we can see everything here. We don't need to modify anything in the code for the time being. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what else we can modify here. So if I take a look at mobile, you can see how here there are a couple of styles set once again for the different um, like font styles. So I'm going to go ahead and go all the way down here because I already saw that there are a couple of media queries. So we have one media query here that is setting a line height, font size and font weight for all of the words that we have in here for a specific breakpoint. And then there's a second media query. I don't really want any of these in here because I'm going to keep the styles that I want to have. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And now we have our very large font here once more. Now, if you wanted to make changes to the styles for this heading on mobile, what you can do is create your own media query and then style away in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to set up a pretty standard media query for 7.1, so 767, but you can absolutely adjust it to your own design needs. So media screen and max width 767 pixels. And then pixels, there we go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna target everything that we have within this heading. So if we take a look here, 
you can see how we have this is the whole like code block so the code block starts here and then here we have sp intro which is the first part of the structure of the heading that we grabbed from the code pen and then in here we have the h1 which has a class of sp headline then we have a span within the h1 and then we have another span that is holding all of the v elements so we could target each of these things or at least the b elements and the span element within the heading but i kind of want to do that faster because i already know that i want to target everything within this container called sp intro so what i'm going to do is i'm going to target sp intro and i'm going to target everything inside it so that little star sign just means that we're going to target everything within the sp intro so i'm going to do it this way it may not be the cleanest way but this is the fastest way so i'm going to go ahead and do it this way and i'm going to set a new font size for everything so font size let's do maybe like 30 pixels that's a little bit too small 50 pixels 50 pixels looks pretty good uh, one thing that is actually bothering me is the fact that the heading is all the way down here so i'm going to edit that really quickly here let's go ahead and change the order of these things so i'm going to put this at the top and move this here and this here There we go. I'll save this. Take a look. All right. I think that's a much better font size for mobile. Let's see what it looks like. Perfect. We have that. Now you can see here how some of the phrases that are a little bit long are not really wrapping into a second line. So I actually want that to happen. You may not want that to happen, but I do. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can fix that. I'm going to refresh this. And anytime you see that the words are getting caught off, make sure to refresh your page first because that usually fixes the issue. It's just something that happens when you resize from you know, mobile and then go all the way up to desktop, then things don't really look great. Um, but if you refresh the page or if you see the live site, everything should be working correctly. Now let's go ahead and tackle those words or those phrases that are a little bit too long. The way we can fix that is by actually tweaking the code here itself, so the plugin itself. So all the way up here, you can see that there's a snippet that says SP words wrapper V. So this is basically targeting all of those phrases that we have looping inside our heading. Now there's this little property here called white space that has been set to no wrap. So no wrap, what it's doing is basically forcing all of the words that we have within that phrase to stay in one line. So if what we want is for things to be able to stack into a second line, what we need to do is change this little property from no wrap to normal. So you're going to see that once I do that, and then I refresh the page over here, now we're going to be able to have all of those larger phrases drop into a second line instead of having that overflow that goes over into the image that I have here on the right side. The cool thing about this is that everything is going to adjust itself. So you're not really going to have an overflow of this second word, like dropping onto the text that you have down here or anything like that. Everything is just going to adjust that space on its own. Like the heading is going to adjust the space on its own to be able to fit all of that text in there. Now let's go ahead and check out mobile here to see how everything looks like. So once again, make sure to reload the frame or refresh your page to make sure that you have all of the changes applied in here so that everything gets calculated or recalculated. So here you can see how we have everything dropping into a second line, which is awesome. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but on this last phrase here, you can see how the G sort of gets cut off. In fact, I think in the next word, yeah, here, Ipsum. So you can see how the P doesn't show completely. So let's go ahead and do one last little fix here to be able to sort this out. So what seems to be happening here is that the B elements holding that text doesn't seem to be tall enough to be able to fit the text that we have within them. So what we can do here is basically add a little bit of padding at the bottom of those B elements to see if that helps the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and go here to my snippet and then i'm going to be targeting the same thing so i'm going to be reusing the snippet so sp intro b uh, th those are the elements that i want to target here so let's just go ahead and add a little bit of padding at the bottom so maybe let's start with like 20 pixels 
Let's see if how that works. Okay, perfect. See, we can see now the whole G element or the, the G letter, uh, and then here the P, perfect. Let's actually try to reduce it and see if that's like 10 pixels is enough because I don't want to have like a big gap between the text. Yeah, that seems to do the trick. Look at that. Now we have the whole P and we have the whole G. All right, perfect. Let's take a look at desktop as well. Let's refresh this for a second. All right, let's see if that's enough. We see the whole P. Now, for the G, there's like a little bit left there. So there are two things we could do. We could either adjust the padding at the bottom for everything, or we can set a padding of the bottom for the desktop version and one for mobile. Personally, I think I'm just going to add a little bit more space in here, which should fix the whole issue. Yeah, here we see the whole G. And then here, there's not too much space here left. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, I'm actually going to have to refresh this. Yes. Let's try this. And the last one. All right, perfect. We have the whole G there. Now to wrap this up, I just want to show you a couple of things that you can change within the jQuery code to be able to modify the speed of this looping function. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at this. Settings, advanced code injection. So in here, in this first part of the script, you can see how we have a couple of variables. So this first one is the one that we're interested in. So this one called animation delay is the one that is going to allow you to set how much time it takes for the other word to show up. So if you want this to be faster, you can use a smaller number. If you want this to be slower, you can use a bigger number. So keep in mind that these numbers are in milliseconds. So this is 2.5 seconds. So if we wanted this to be a little bit slower, the delay of each of the phrases, we wanted this to be a little bit slower, then we could use something like, I don't know, 5.5 seconds. And then if we save this, you're going to see how now each of the words takes a little bit longer to be able to show the next one. So depending on how much text you have in there or how you want things to be set up for your client, you can go ahead and make this as fast or as slow as you need to. All right, my friend, and there you have it. That's how you can create a really awesome looping words effect in Squarespace. Really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on the last days of the 12 days of Christmas, and I will see you tomorrow.